Hello and welcome to Wikipedia Weekly Network here where Albin Larsson and I, Jan Einerli, are editing Wikidata Live. Hello Albin, how are you doing? I'm doing great. As you can see, it's kind of this cozy lighting right here right now because it's that time of the year when it gets dark here. So yeah. How are you, Jan? I'm good. It's just getting sunset here. I can see some red clouds, but I have a lot of lighting in here. So <laughs> yeah. I'm good. And today we are doing gadgets. Gadgets and user scripts. Lots of gadgets and user scripts. Do you have any specific in mind you want to show everybody? Uh, I have a couple of ones, but more it's more of a showcase and like a gadgets and user scripts extravaganza rather than focusing down one thing, you know, trying to like covering as many as possible, but maybe doing very little editing. And you? Yeah, it's going to be similar here from, from my side. I'm going to try to, I'm going to do a little bit of editing so you can see sort of hands on what they're really doing. Uh, sometimes it's harder to do because you have to find something specific to do. And yeah, I haven't found everything, but uh, yeah, a few, few things. So perhaps we should show first where you find uh, the gadgets stuff. Yeah. And if you're and, and you can only access this if you're logged in. So this is one of the really strong incentives to get yourself an account if you don't already have it. I my suspicion is that most people watching this <laughs> do have an account. <laughs> uh, but either way, uh, you, you you need to be logged in. And then when you're logged in, you'll head up here to your preferences in the top uh, toolbar, and you'll click that one. And you'll get this uh, new sort of tab, tabbed things. And now I, for some reason, went straight into the gadgets. I must be something cached here for me. Usually, you come to this tab by default, but this is under gadgets where you find them. And the nice things with gadgets compared to user scripts is you can just enable and disable them with a checking or unchecking this. Uh, otherwise, um, they are quite similar uh, in, in what they can do. Uh, some yeah. of them are really powerful in both places, and some are like small, easy add-ons. So I'm, I'm going to show you a few things here. And I'm actually going to start from the very top, because this merge uh, tool makes it a bit easier than to use the Wikidata native merge functionality. Yeah, the special page. Yeah, the special page merge. And I'm just going to show you, I don't have anything to merge, but I'm going to show you how it actually works. Anyway, I'm not going to do the merge, so you will have to imagine what happens afterwards. But you'll find it here under the more function, you'll get this new thing, merge with. And if you click this, this will bring up a new little uh, modal dialog. So it, call, it says merge wizard, and then it had merge with. And here, you need to paste another QID. And if you then, if I say, tap a Q, one, two, three, four, five. Oops, that's not one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, if I press the merge here now, it will try to merge with it. And it will try to merge when you have this, this default check here, always merge into the older entity. So, and in that will, since these are <laughs> numbered up, it will take the lowest number automatically. So you don't need to keep track of that yourself when you're merging with this tool because it will help you with that thing. So that's really handy. And then when it does the merge, uh, it will try to incorporate things from them both and preserve as much as possible, which also might uh, mean that you need to go and clean up some stuff. So for instance, uh, you, you better check all the uh, languages or the labels because some might not be relevant anymore if there, if there was a slight difference from the first one. Perhaps that was a redirect that wasn't needed or some something like that. 
and then of course you you, you check also because it, usually it fixes so you don't get duplicates but if one of them has um, you know, qualifiers then it might be add, added as an extra and you then essentially they want to say the same thing but one ha has a qualifier so you can also clean that up so that is more or less the the merge thing and then there's of course help for merge if you want to look into it even more so that was the first little tool and that is one of the tools that i use quite a lot uh, it's tricky because <laughs> you, you, you stumble upon things that need to be merged all the time but then when you're looking for it you can find it yeah and it's quite it's in your nerves so when you see it you always merge you don't save them for streaming you want to fix the problem directly yes yes it's hard to keep your keep your good things but i do think i have some some good edits here uh, a second one that i haven't used that much but that i think yeah, is interesting is this find right redirects for aliases and it actually says here exactly what it does so you you get a new button and it looks up your uh, from wikipedia redirects that leads to this and suggest them as being added as aliases which can be quite handy so we'll, we'll Take a look and see if we can find something here. So, mm -hmm. it should have been here. Is it because I'm too narrow? No. Try to reload. And this is also one of the things with, with the gadgets. If you have too many, they might conflict with each other. And all right, so now this doesn't show up anymore. All right, uh, let's go to the next one instead, <laughs> the, the, the label lister. The label lister is really handy when you want to edit many things at the same time. And especially if you want to see all the uh, languages that there is. So if we go into something like this, you can check the label list here, and then you have all the, the things. and there is a beta version and reloads like that. And now you can just edit here um, many things in one one swoop. Uh, really yes. handy if you want. And I think it's really most handy when you need to clean up some things, perhaps yeah. after a merge. So that was two, three of the. the things that oh and, and then one thing that i'm is a, is a tool that i really suggest that you use only when you need it because it's sort of a, a little bit of a i get bothered by it in interface when i don't in is is not in that mood uh, and it is the preview thing and what it what it does and i think i can need to uh, zoom out a little bit here for you to actually see the the benefits of it. Let's see. So it gives you two new things. You get these black little bubbles here, and you get this little arrow. And when you press this arrow, oh, it says you have not selected an article yet, so I'll, I'll select the Swedish. Then you, it actually pops up. Uh, oh, this is super thing. nice. Yes. Check like basic metadata. Is there, this is like, when was this funded? And yeah. then you can look it up in the site. Yeah. And oh. I think it's especially handy when you're like, think, you, you start to suspect that one item and the interwiki links are about different things. Then yeah. you can quickly just see, oh, this is what the Swedish said. What says, what is the Norwegian one? And then you could perhaps see here, oh, this is by the Norwegian government, not the Swedish government, because that would usually show in the top. And that would make it very easy to figure out. 
But for me, as you can see here, it, I have some other things that, that I don't play nicely with. And also, this box tend to pop out automatically for me. I'm not sure if it does it for everybody else. With, with, that means that I don't see uh, all the inter-site links that are underneath here by default. Yeah. So, yeah, it happened to me. Yeah, I, I had it previously, but yeah. So that's why I turned it off. But it is really good when you have this uh, sort of m messy items that you want to clean up, uh, then it's super good. And it can also be good if you are find an empty item, uh, sort of like, oh, I just want to see, is this a uh, human? Where is it from? When is it born? Uh, because then that's usually shown in the top here. Let's see, this might be a good example. So now this has some of the basic things here, but otherwise, it, oh, I don't know how to select here. Then we said, yeah, born 67 from Sweden, a conductor and stuff like that. You could add a lot of basic things. And that also brings me to, to sort of t the next in line here that I wanted to show you. One that I think that I should use more often, but I don't. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure why I didn't, but a little bit in the middle of the list here, you have something called dra draggable site links. And it makes it very easy to show in Wikidata that you actually got this information from uh, Wikipedia. And we, we can see it in action here on, on Joachim Gustafsson, which is a quite new uh, article and Wikidata item. And it lacks totally all of these, no references at all. And if we look from well, in the Swedish Wikipedia article, we can see, well, born 1967. All right. Oh, it says 4967, but it has no reference. Then we can just drag, copy this. And when I drag this, it says, you can already see it says imported from SV Wiki. And I can just drag that down. Let's see if I can hit here. Boom. Did I hit it? Oh, yes, there it reloads as well. And now we have one reference here, uh, which is imported from Swedish Wikipedia. And now people can see at least, well, if I need to check this state, uh, the value of this, where did it come from? Well, all right, yeah, I had to head over to Swedish Wikipedia and we'll see if there are any better sources over there. Yeah. And of course, if you do have the time, it is better to check the Swedish Wikipedia for the proper source. Uh, but this is sort of like, well, in, it's a gradual increase. It's not worse. It's a little, little bit better, at least. But then heading into to actually doing proper references, we have one other really good thing here. So we have a gadget called duplicate references. And you have seen us been using this in this uh, show yeah. many times. It's a great it's, one. It's a great one. And I, since it is so great, I'm actually going to show you in, in detail for, for how you can do it. So this is the, the Swedish government offices or Regeringskansliet. And they have... Uh, on their website, they had the social media. So they said, well, here's our office on LinkedIn and here's our office on, on YouTube. And this item lacks uh, both the LinkedIn and YouTube identifier. So we're going to add those. So we'll go for LinkedIn company ID and we'll copy the link here. Now you, you also see another user script uh, being used here because now when I paste this URL, you will see it blink a little quickly and it will remove some things. Boom. And then it's just the identifier here. And I think we will see something more about this from Alvin later. Uh, but this is a user script I use. So 
now I could publish this, but of course, here I even have this, this as a source. So we, we're going to add it as a source uh, and a reference. So this will be a reference URL and a retrieve date. That's today. And I'm going to come back to that one because you see, saw so that I didn't add anything. It just added today's date here. And then I want to do this really properly because unfortunately uh, there's here in Sweden, at least if we're changing the cabinets, they usually clean out some of the pages on the, uh, <laughs> on the government website. So I have uh, pre-prepared here. I archive this in, in the internet archive. So we can go back and see that this was actually case, the case before. So I'll have an archive URL. And this one was and today. That was a few days ago. So I'll add an archive date here as well. 2021.0914. All right. I'll publish this. And this is sort of like a it's some work went into to creating this reference. And with the duplicate reference uh, gadget. You, we can now just oh, I'll have to reload here, I think. And now it sorted. All right. Now we have this new little button copy. So I could copy this to another statement. But of course, I don't have the other statements yet. So let's do the, the YouTube channel ID. And this one, you can see it in bottom there. It's the channel ID directly. So I can just copy the link, head over here, and publish. And I, I think I need to reload again for the gadget to actually know that this statement exists on this item. I could have shown you the error also. <laughs> so I'll copy here and I'll scroll down to the YouTube. And, uh, and now we have this new button, insert reference. And if I just press insert here, boom, all of this uh, quite simply. And this is super, super good if you like make one statement in the beginning, you add a reference, and then you use using the same source and add a ton of statements, and then you can just copy, insert, 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 and it, it's super efficient. Yeah. And for some, some specifically some pages you have a, like a lot of data on, uh, so you really need to use the same. And then it also makes it more fun, I think, to actually add some energy on to make it the uh, reference being really proper because you know yeah. well I, i'll just do this once and then i can copy it yeah which of course adds value for everyone yeah it's less repetitive yeah um yes so here we improve the government offices a little bit and mm -hmm, what else did i want to show you yes so one thing that you saw there was the date. And that is, uh, where is that one? Do, 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 do. Uh, I think it's almost at the end. Current date is the name of it, yes. This one automatically adds the date of today while using the property retrieved. And you saw it in action there when I just added retrieved. And I think I can show you this again here without saving. If I add a reference and use retrieved, it will just pop in the date there. So that's super handy. Uh, yeah. You know that if you have been watching this show, you have seen me several times not using this and seen me struggle typing the date in. <laughs> Why are you not using it? Just uh, to put it on or conflicting with something else? Yeah, I was developing something which is was ah. conflicting with. Yes, all right. 
then I have a, a little one that is uh, perhaps not the one you usually use that often, uh, or but it can save you some time. And here in the bottom, we have something that says links count, counts total number of pages linked to a specific page on what special what links here. And to show you what, what it actually does, we can go, for example, here, the Minister of Finance. Uh, and if you're editing Wikipedia, you know that in the left toolbar, we have something called what links here, which just shows you the, the wiki links to this page. And you saw it popped in here a little bit, a new button called count. And especially on Wikidata, we can have quite a lot of incoming links. And sometimes you want to know, well, is this like, uh, you can immediately see if it's 50 or more. But uh, if you go switch this one to 500 and it's still several pages, then you don't know, well, is it just 501 or is it several thousand? Because it can easily be several thousand for some items. And then this count is very handy. You just press that one and it runs through the API and says, oh, it's 82. So now I know it's just one more page. So if sometimes if you need to uh, or want to search for something that links to it, you know how much work you have ahead for of, of you. So that was the link count. And then I think I have one bonus because this, this is not a gadget, but it is so good. I want to show you it anyway. So we're still under preferences. And uh, instead of using gadgets, you go over to the beta features. And here we have a beta feature that I absolutely love. It's the discussion tools. Yeah. And this, this discussion tools makes things so much easier to discuss on, on anything. So yeah. It's, it's becoming incredibly useful and it's improving every day. Yeah. I just was surprised all today about having a bit of a new fancy feature and I was like, yay. Yes. So I'm just going to show you what, what it does. So I'll head into a wiki project. Uh, typically you have a discuss, discussion and this one actually just go to the talk page. And what's new in this page, it's, it's two things. Um, the biggest one is that you get a reply button after each and every uh, post. And if you go into something like a little bit more complex here, like uh, let's do the basic first. If I just want to reply here, I'll press this one. And this will actually do all the indentation for you automatically. And it will also sign for you. So if I start writing something here, it will also have a preview just below it. And you'll see how, how the signature is automatically added. And it has a, a visual or source, so whatever you want. And it also have a nice thing here. If you want to talk, it keeps track of who all is already in this discussion. So it's very yeah. quick to uh, ping someone back if you're starting to talk to them. And it auto completes also if you start typing. So yeah, super useful. I'm going to cancel out of this, discard that comment, and actually do a proper reply because I think I had something to say here that I forgot to. Um, Yes. So now, now we're the, <laughs> we're on here, but I'm actually going to reply to Alvin here. Uh, so you wrote we, you started a sub page, and I'm just going to say that's great. Uh, I added it to the header. Nice. The type of replies that makes Wikidata a friendlier friendlier place. Yes. And I, uh, I'm actually going to uh, ping you here as well. So you see, it just gives you the, uh, it doesn't use any fancy templating. It adds you this in raw uh, wiki text, but it, it works. And you can see below here that um, how, how it will look like. And then I'll just press reply here. 
I mean, go ahead and do the, the posting for me. And the second thing this tool adds is you see on the far right here, we have subscribe buttons which make it possible to receive notification for only a part of the page. So this might be specifically good on for perhaps the project uh, chat on Wikidata, where you might not want to watch everything because there's so much being written there. Uh, but there might be just one or two discussion that you want to follow. Then you can subscribe and get notification on, on only those. This this for me is super useful on like property property talk pages where I just want to ask a question, but it's a commonly used property, so people will like write a lot of new topics, and mm -hmm. I just want that specific discussion. Yeah. So that was my uh, final little bonus thing here. Head over to the beta uh, features. If you're experimental and uh, dare to dream, you can always aut automatically enable everything. Uh, that might give you some surprises sometimes. <laughs> so you can also do them one by one. But if you do it by one by one, pop in there every, every quarter, every half year, or something yeah. like that, and see if there's something new, because there's continuous development. And I think there's, for everything major nowadays, uh, it'll pop up in the beta first, maybe before going live. Indeed. And you will get some surprises. I remember, I think it was like two weeks ago, I, I we went on stream like this and I asked John, like, where did they hide that thing? And then he didn't have that beta feature. And for me, my UI looked entirely differently and such. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> All right. So let's see. We got a common.js there. I'm actually going to begin a little bit by showing a new user script. So I'm going to talk more about user scripts in general rather than gadgets. Um, I'm going to try a new one I started working on last week. And it's still a work in progress, but it's, it's a rather nice one, I imagine. So I'm actually going to show how to use it rather than anything else. So I'm actually going to head over to gov directory at all, which is a Wikidata-based product that Jan and I do. And I essentially want to <clears throat> add social media accounts to a Norwegian municipality. So I'm going to just kind of pick one here. Let's see. I actually had one in mind. That is not how it's spelled. Not at all how it's spelled. There we go. So this one has no social media accounts as an external identifier in Wikidata. So what I will do and what I usually do when I edit a lot of this is that I open both Wikidata and their official website. So usually I head straight down to the footer looking for the social media accounts. I find them. I'm going to copy all of them to my clipboard one by one and like that. And now we're going to open a Wikidata. And now you can see I got something new here. I got something called auto identifier input and input the full URL for the given identifier it says. So if I, I paste in what I got here, so I have to review what I got. So I directly look at their, their YouTube URL and it's, it's just a search to YouTube, which isn't their, their YouTube accounts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that one and head straight to, I think it was Instagram. So I'm gonna paste in that link instead. Um, and then I can see, hey, it says Instagram.com. It all looks correct. So I'm gonna click add here and we're gonna see, and it says added Instagram identifier. See so if I reload here and scroll down to the identifiers, let's see. It has a lot of statements. So identifiers, we got Instagram username and it added exactly what I said, but I didn't have to select something. I didn't need to scroll down here because it, I'm gonna copy in the, the Facebook URL to explain it. So if I paste that one in, what it does, it, it looks at the URL and knows that that's the formatter URL for the property in question. 
uh, figures out that, hey, I need to cut that away and connect it to that particular property. So Jan showed you this auto identifier, like it cuts away just the URL part when you paste it. It's kind of that on steroids. That by that it also figures out the the property by itself. So I click add on this one. Let's see what it says. It's gonna take a second. It added Facebook identifier. Sometimes the URL is like oddly formatted and things like that. So you might need to do a bit of cleanup, but usually it works. So this way I can usually go back to this list here or having a Spark L query and just walk through them and do that and it saved me a couple of clicks. There is a current limitation to this, it's still very early. Um, and it's just worked with social media identifiers for now because it's built for this particular purpose for this cover director part. But I, I intend to make it possible to use it for any identifier. Um, so that's one and it, I'm actually gonna head over. This is not a gadget. Um, Jan mentioned user scripts, they are a little differently. And you, you can actually install your own user script always at special my page at common.js. It will automatically bring you to your own common.js page where you can do a bit of an import script and then the, the like link to the script you want to install. But to discover those, uh, a good way is to head over, I think, to this URL. Yes. So I'm gonna do so. I'm gonna see what this is. I'm gonna actually leave my commodities page open. So here is Wikidata Tools, which is a great page which just lists tools in general uh, around Wikidata. But then they have something, enchant user interface. And here is usually a lot of things related to gadgets and user scripts or tools that are user scripts and gadgets, which has a little bit more of information. So I'm actually going to, I want to showcase a couple of few ones. Um, let's see, I had one particularly in mind. Um, yeah, I think it was this one, enter to shape allows you to check whenever an item confirmed to entity schema and displays whenever each property and statement in the entity conforms to that entity schema. So we have been do, doing a couple of things with entity schemas in the past where, for example, um, done one for orienteers um, and a couple of other things. But being on this page, I can click activate and see what I should add to my common.js. And this links here actually goes directly to your personal one. It uses that special link. Um, so let's let's install this one. I'm gonna copy this one. I'm gonna head over to my common.js. I actually already have it there. Just comment it away. So I'm gonna un comment it, so it's this row. It's used the exact same, which I copied from that page. I used to happen to have it here. And I'm gonna publish changes here, make changes to my own. And then I'm gonna need to look up an orient here so we can try this entity schema. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a famous one. Swedish female orienteer and ski orienteer, it says, and it had this parts here. And you can see that it kind of looks odd here. You, when you start adding a lot of uh, gadgets and user script, you could see some conflict, for example, on Jan's where his copy QID button was covered by a couple of things and things like that. It happens. Some, some user scripts and gadgets, you can just enable them when you need them if you're doing something very repetitive. But I'm gonna try this out. So we, we actually created the entity schema quite a while ago, and I happen to know that it's the entity schema for orienteers is 218. So I'm gonna click check here. And it does a check incredibly quickly. So if we we can see a couple of required properties, it says, yeah, it got the occupation and it is correct somehow. Country of citizenship, it's present, so it's also green. Instance of is correct. Then it says too many statements, member of sports team. 
And I imagine that something we need to get back to into that entity schema because I imagine that could be how many as it wants. Too many sports as well. I think a person can do <laughs> as many they want. Yes. But in general, if this would be a more fine-tuned uh, schema, it would work. And that, that's on me in this case. I have done this schema on the stream. <laughs> um, then we can see that it does the same for participant in. Country for sport is present. It lists optionals. Um, then we can see outward received. It's also too many statements, which I don't believe in. But then we can see here, it, it's missing an optional one, International World Games Association Athlete ID. And that, that's a bit of a concern. That is something that should be there, I can say. And then something else it does, which is really nice. It, it says author properties that this uh, item has, but that is missing in the schema itself. So for example, it has that image. And yeah, image should probably be an optional property for this one, or it should inherit all the properties from human. Um, we see that they got a Twitter username. I wouldn't say that that is very important for an orienteer. Work period, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Uh, victory, mm, maybe not. Uh, fees co cross country skier ID, no, not really. That should probably be something else. Uh, the ne.se ID, no, it's uh, identifier related to Sweden, a couple of more ones. Uh, family name should probably be there. Uh, then there is schema stats, no, that's ski related. Social media, no, not really. So that's a couple of ones that just are very helpful. It's helpful both to like find errors in the schema, find potential improvements to the schema, and find actual errors on the items. This happened to be a very well modeled item, so we mostly found errors in the, the schema, and I really need to switch up my example items for this stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how that works. And I think it's just a great one. Um, particularly, I can imagine using it for glaciers where they're often like low quality items. So, so this is sort of similar, but very different to a, a gadget called Recoin. Yeah. Like it, it uses very different methods, but it's sort of, uh, as, as an end user, you get the same sort of help. Yeah, you, you make a bit more exploration, but it's kind of more curated. The Recoin mm. can kind of show you what you just wouldn't expect. I actually wanted to show Recoin, so I'm going to do that straight away. Um, as you can see, I got Enable all beta features, so my menu look different from Jan's. Um, so my preferences is here under the, the icon here. So if I want to go to gadgets, I can go to gadgets. It doesn't do, go directly to gadgets for me. Wikidata centric, and I'm just gonna search it for the coin. You can see I, I got I use new gadgets currently. It appears. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna enable Recoin, and I'm actually I got a couple of I wanted to do a couple of examples to show this in in the real world. So I'm actually gonna head over to a, a page which lists uh, all glaciers in Wikidata by their number of statements. So I should be able to sort this. So here we, we got one on Iceland. It has a lot of statements. So you're gonna click that one. And let's see, Recoin, it shows up here uh, below my all water things right now. Um, so it says a couple of things what it imagined it would have based on some stati statistics about similar items. On focus list of Wikimedia project, for example, don't really know that different from it's a very common one on glaciers. They share often share names. A continent also a very common one, especially on glaciers, because a lot of them aren't in countries because they are in Antarctica. So it shows here, but on Iceland it's not really that necessarily. Uh, located on in physical feature, that is not super important here either. 
but one could technically add it and different from. But this this was the glass year with the most statements. So we didn't got anything obvious here. So I'm gonna close this, but then I'm gonna sort this by least statements. So one is very little. So I'm gonna also open one, let's see, with five statements. So this has one statement. It's an instance of Glacier. So if I ask Recoin here, it says that 98% of Glaciers has country. So we should probably add country if we could. Also coordinate location because it's 97% of these Glaciers. Uh, located in the administrative ter ter territorial entity, continent 22, mountain range, and so on. So it, it's super helpful that way. And it actually uses statistics rather than entity schemas like this one did, which means that uh, you find a bit more uh, non-expected things sometimes. Here's the one with five statements. So we can see it, it got the basics, it got country, it got the coordinate location. We still got access to this recoin. It still says continent, it says mountain range, super common for glaciers as they usually need to be on high elevation. Image, also a common one, 11%. And named after is a common one. How long they are, their area, so on. So super useful gadget. Um, and with that, I'm gonna head over to this enchant user interface list again. Uh, I wanted to try one actually, and I, I wanted to try this one for a long time. Let's see, where is it? I'm gonna search, compact the item, compact items by Yoon Harald. And I, I just, I want to try this because I think this could be really nice for me. I haven't just gotten to it. I also think that this is an interesting example because if I click here and for those being technical, you can actually see that this is not something you add in your common.js. This is something you add because this you change this doesn't change functionality at all. It just changes how it looks. And therefore it's in a different file. It's something called common.css. And it's essentially the same file as your common.js, but you switch out the end to being CSS instead. So I'm gonna copy these two links, head over to my common.css. It says I don't even have this one on Wikidata. So I'm gonna put them in here, those two lines, um, like that. I want to have another row because that's me. And I'm gonna publish this. And I'm gonna head over to some item. Once it's done. Speaking of switching out your example items, I'm gonna go to the same one again. And you can see they are narrow. And I need to click here and it actually opens everything editing. Oh, this is nice. Oh, I can fit so much information here. Um, and it technically changes how Wikidata looks. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try edit quite a bit with this. I think the add statement ends up being here. Oh, but I can scroll this entire item page rather quickly. Yeah, I like this. I'm gonna try edit with this in the future a little bit. Um, but yeah, how that's... did the references look when you expanded them? Let's see, they look like that. It's a little hard to compare. I can't exactly remember how it. I can actually, if I do, if it I is, duplicate is, this, we have unusually uh, small the screens right now when we're streaming because we're zooming yeah. so much. It looked like the edit button disappeared. Yeah, it. It does, but let's see here. If I can go to the same, so we can kind of. This is what it looks like with the compact ones. Here is the the default style. Uh, we can see that it says edit, but here we got an edit button. 
out here is that both because i think in in your normal you have one edit button for references and one ed edit button for let's see yeah it all right no that doesn't have a reference let's see yeah that's oh, a, reference. a reference yes right yeah it does so quickly again the comparison here we just now there is an image but we you see let's go down here where they uh, have a little bit more space also i, I was confused there's just one edit <laughs> i'm just yeah, checking so it here <laughs> let's see here we get one two three four if there is one value in each here here we get a bunch of them i'm not even gonna count them <laughs> so yeah i like that i'm gonna play with that for a while um and it's just slightly different it's common.css instead um that's gonna be interesting to play with uh, but this is a great list to go and check things in it it has a ton of things really um i however want to show another way to find new user scripts or potential user scripts and it's on this URL and I'm just gonna open it on my end and that's the wrong link on my end. Did I put the right one in the window? Yes I did. No I did not. That's the correct one. Yes. All right. And then you go to gadget usage statics, statistics. But this is not only for gadgets. This is also for user scripts. I have to move a little here because, um, and it actually shows you them by active users. But the most important thing with this list is directly change out how it's sorted because then you get the best ones at the top by the best user. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but it, otherwise you click two times and you're back, but you're, you're missing out on something if you don't sort it directly. Um, so we can see that the merge one, which Jan showed, is actually the, the most popular one. Um, the label listener, another, I think you mentioned it, Jan, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, you even showed it, yeah. So it, it's the second most common one. Move is a super common one. Uh, request deletion, of course, something called auto edit, uh, duplicate references, one of our favorites, uh, and so on. And this is super useful. And you can actually, like, you can go down to a few hundred users or even, even less. I think, let's see. I, I'm not sure if it shows all of them, but we can see that if I if I sort them on alphabetically and get my own first, I can see that my most popular one is used by 48 people, and it's uh, abnitiata slash osm, which adds a link to OpenStreetMap element if it got that this external identifier. And other than that, it's my iNaturalist script, which I think I've shown. So I'm also going to show how to install it if you are on one of these pages. So let's say we want to install my copy QID uh, user script. I can just click this. And it actually takes me to the script itself. So you can actually, if you know how to read this, you can understand what it does exactly. But if you want to install it, you copy this part. You head back to your command.js. I'm going to use user, my username slash .js because that's the quickest way. And I'm going to go edit here. And first of all, I'm going to remove that script. I want to install and reinstall it. Import script. And I copy the path used from the title. Uh, previously, and to add it, I type import script, parentheses, those small things, and just put in the title of the script itself, which I just copied from the title like this. And then I would save this. You have a tiny typo. I have a tiny typo as well. Script there, yes. 
that is how I would do because this is exactly what it looked like before. It won't do difference because I already have this particular one installed, but what it does in practice, more, more variation in my example items, as you can see, it add this copy QID button, which is, hey, now I got it on my clipboard. So I can go to my example items even faster. Um, I think we have shown that previously, but that is how you can install if you're on that list. I'm just gonna head straight back to it, see if we can gain any more insights. Um, so this is a great list because it also combines the gadgets with the user scripts. So it actually says here where you should go to enable it. So for example, on this merge one, you can't can't click it to get to the user script because it's a gadget and it says here that go to your preferences to enable this one. Um, and if I scroll down to something that isn't a gadget, you can see the gadget is more popular. This one we should add in our command.js. We need to go to the link here, copy the, the header and add it there ourselves. And there you have one that we also have been showing a lot, the, the move claims. Yes, this is an other one we, we use all the time. It adds like a small green button. I think you, Jan, had it enabled. Yeah. Um, which, hey, this claim here, I want to duplicate this or move this to a different item. You can do that with a click of a button. Um, that would be it. Another super useful one. and. I don't use this. You could see that in my own gadgets. I had zero enabled <laughs> currently. But if you want to be more productive on Wikidata, I believe personally that this is a great way to, to find new things to really improve your editing workflow. Um, here's a move claim two. That's maybe even more efficient. No. <laughs> no. Uh, they, uh, they just merged it. So move claims two, if you install it now, it says you should uh, use the. We, we have oh. migrated, but there's still 146 users here who need to <laughs> migrate. Yeah. So here, here's a bunch of great things which I should probably myself go through and see if I can have any use of. This one, of course, I already got. It's my own, um, and so on. But yeah, that's, that's a little bit from me. Uh, so two resources where you can go to find uh, curated and use the most useful and common gadgets and user scripts. So, yeah. All right. And I, it wasn't that much of a chat today in the comments. Uh, perhaps you were uh, eagerly installing things in your end at, at, at the same time and trying it out. I at least hope that's the case. Uh, we will be back next Saturday as usual. We don't have a topic figured out yet. So if you have anything, um, ping us in show, social media or on our talk pages and we can see if we can prepare it for the next time or even further uh, ahead. This topic was suggested to us that we, hey, can't you show it? And of course we we're use things so much and we know there are great helping tools for you so yeah all right yeah great that we give you yeah. some things to look into super lovely That's lovely really to hear nice that yes and with that i think we say goodbye for now and happy editing happy editing mm -hmm.